takes more time to lose heat. So, so you usually want, uh, when you're drinking coffee or you want something to stay warm, you, uh, you want this one to be high, you want the thickness to be big, and you want the specific heat to be big, these two numbers, so that this can be big. But then you want the conductivity in the area to be as low as possible. <clears throat> So this is, they're kind of comparing it to two resistors in series. Heat transfer across a composite slab. So you have one with a certain K constant, another K constant, and heat is flowing through them. So how does that compare to two resistors in series? So we can kind of do it like that. So this topic kind of gives the whole general idea of things that are in series and parallel. Series and parallel. Usually we compare it to resistors in series and parallel because that's the one a lot of people know, you know. And then when we talk about capacitors in series and parallel, we compare it to resistors in series parallel and springs in series and parallel. So that's from Physics 101. So we have a spring with a certain Hooke's constant K1, and then another spring, Hooke's constant K2. This is in series, you see? So how do they add up in series? Okay, how about capacitors? C1, C2. How, how about resistors? Okay, now in this case, it's a slab conductivity, K1 and K2, and temperature T1, T2, let's say. Let's see. So then heat is transferring through here, a certain Q, right? Or we, in our case, we can say P, P. So let's use the resistor as the basis of comparison. So um, usually in series and parallel, something is the same and something adds up. So in the case of the resistors in series, the current that's flowing through the, this resistor is the same as the current flowing through that resistor. And it's the same as the current flowing through the battery. So we say I total is I1, which is I2. So the electrical current flow through them is the same. So then uh, what adds up? So then we can say the voltage of the battery is equal to the voltage across the uh, resistor one plus voltage across the resistor two. So the voltages in series add up and the currents in series are the same. So then you use the equation, voltage is current times resistance. Then you can say uh, V total is current total times R total. And then voltage V2 is I2 R2. So then what you're doing is you're determining what is the same 
what adds up, then you're using the equation that connects this variable to this variable. So V is IR, then you're putting that in. Then if whatever is the same, you're canceling. So I total, I1, I2, then you have R total is R1 plus R2. And that's how you determine how resistors add up in series. You see. And then we could do, when we get to the capacitor section in a couple of weeks, we'll compare to resistors and we'll see how they add up. In Physics 101, we already covered how springs add up. So then in here, we're gonna do the same. So we're gonna say, what is the same here? And what adds up? So what ends up being the same is the power, the heat power flow. The power flow through here, the, conduct the conductivity of heat through here is the same as through there, right? So it'd be P1, P2, P1 is equal to P2, which is equal to P total. So kind of like the power flow of heat is becoming the analogy of current flow of electricity. You see, power flow of heat, current flow of electricity. So P is to I, think of it that way. Uh, so then what is adding up? It's the temperature difference. The temperature difference between this slab and this slab and the temperature difference between this end of the slab and this end of the slab is not the same. But the temperature difference across here plus the temperature difference across there gives you the total temperature difference. So temperature difference P1 plus temperature difference P2 is temperature difference total. So what's the analogy of temperature difference then? Voltage, you see? Temperature difference is proportional to voltage. If you think about it, that makes sense because voltage is actually a voltage difference, right? We should always be writing delta V, but we don't, right? So in the case of the electrical circuit, what drives the electrical current to flow? What drives that? It's a volt, the battery sets up a voltage difference between the two ends of the uh, the two resistors, right? The battery sets up a voltage difference that when the resistors are placed in the circuit, they allow current to flow, right? And then the voltage difference across this end and this end, delta V1, plus the voltage difference across this end and this end, delta V2, adds up to give you the total voltage difference. So just like voltage difference in a electrical circuit drives electrical current flow, temperature difference across two ends of a material drives heat flow, right? So it's the temperature difference that's similar to voltage. So we should write delta V and it's the power flow that's similar to current flow, you see? So then if that's the case, Use the equation that connects P to delta T. What's that equation? The equation we just learned. P is equal to Ka delta T over delta X. For simplicity, let's just call H1. Just the thickness H. Okay, so now what equation connects this? We can say delta T is equal to PH over Ka. So what I'm doing, notice here, same idea. Once you determine which one adds up, you use the connection the, between that and that, the current, then you substitute it here, and then you eliminate what is the same. So here, I'm gonna solve for delta T, which is similar to saying solve for voltage there, right? Then substitute it here. So delta T1 is gonna be what? P1 H1 over K1 A1, plus P2H2 over K2A2, P total, H total, over K total, A total. So you put 
all of them like that. And then whatever is the same, you cancel. Uh, so then you have your, uh, what is the same? P1, P2, P total. P1, P2, P total. Anything else that's the same? Oh, how about the area? Is the surface area of this the same as the surface area of the surface area? So the surface area you're not seeing here, but it's the area coming out like that. You see? So it's that surface area of that material. So the, uh, the area is the same. You see? So a area A1, A2, A3, A3, A total is the same. So that one cancels. Okay, this tells you how uh, conductors in series add up. What did I tell you earlier? That conductors in series make each other less of a conductor, right? That's why you would want to pile up conductors in series um, to make it less. For example, in the case of the wall, the typical wall would be made of two drywalls at the two ends, right? So wall, two drywalls. <coughs> And then you have the middle that you put some kind of foam or fiberglass, right? So fiberglass and then drywall, drywall. So you have literally three, three conductors in series for the heat to flow from outside to inside or from inside to outside, right? And of course you want to make the thickest one, the one that's the least cake. Right, the one that has the best insulator. So, conductivity of uh, drywall. Let's just say we use this gypsum board, 0.17. Yeah, it's called a gypsum board. Oh, it is? Is that the, okay. So let's say that is um, something like this. So I'm gonna make it six centimeters, uh, 0.17, six centimeters, 0.17. Let's make it a little less, four, four, now, in the middle, we're going to put Than the drywall, yeah, you see, it's about four times or yeah, about four times less. 0.043. So then let's say here 0.043 conductivity, and then let's say that one is 10 centimeters. Make it more 12.5. 
12 centimeters. Okay, then what's the overall conductivity of that um, wall? So maybe we could end with this problem. I can give you a house. Then I'll, we're gonna continue this topic on Monday, talk about conductors in parallel, uh, go a little bit more, and then by Monday we should end 17 and then we'll start 18. 18 is gonna be shorter, I believe, uh, quite a bit shorter. Um, okay, so, so let's say you have a house with that, with that wall. kind of a boring house. So it has a wall on the left side, wall on the right side, and then a roof. Let's say the roof happens to be the exact same kind of roof. Drywall, drywall, insulation, left, right, and then front and back, right? So let's say it's uh, eight meters high by, uh, way and then this way let's say it's eight meters like this and 15 meters like that so a rectangular house like that coming out 15 meters eight meters high now let's make it bigger 20 meters okay so we can say the first question we can say um, what is the K of one wall? And then B, if the air inside is uh, Celsius and outside How long will it take temperature to reach 26 Celsius? If the air inside is 50 and the outside is 20. Okay, so let's calculate the K of the wall. Uh, that would be basically just the flying leaves, right? But we have three conductors in series. So uh, we have H1 over K1 plus H3 over K3. So then you're going to do uh, the thickness 4 centimeters over 0.17. 4 centimeters over 0.17 plus another 4 over 0.17 plus 12 centimeters over uh, 0.043, right? So you put the K of each material, you put the thickness of each material, and then here you put the total thickness of the wall. Uh, so then that's gonna be four, four, eight, 12, 20 centimeters over the total K. And then centimeter, 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 centimeter cancel. So uh, I didn't need to change it to meter. So just do this plus this plus this, cross multiply, and then you can calculate the K total.
I'm getting a point zero six one three. Mm. Invert it. I'm expecting the answer, the overall K to be closer to this guy. In between this guy and in between the fiberglasses K and the drywalls K, but closer to the fiberglass because the fiberglass is the thickest, right? So most of that wall is the fiberglass thickness, so you would expect it to be closer to that guy. So, uh, so K total 0 0.0613. And then the units would be watts per meter Celsius. So the cis the centimeter canceled, that didn't affect any of the units. So then that's gonna be kind of makes sense, yeah. Should because 0.06, this this one was 0.17. So our overall conductivity is dominated by the conductivity of the fiberglass. You see? So now we could put that all together and we can use the the Newton's law of cooling, ln delta T is ln delta T initial minus K A. No, what was it? K, uh, the bigger the conductivity, the bigger the, yeah, MCD T. So I wanted to know which one goes on top. So I don't want to have to walk over there and look at the formula from the review sheet. So I say, what should go on the top? Well, if the K is big and the area of the material is big, it takes less time to lose heat, yeah. So both of them are in the numerator. If the mass of the contents of the room are big, the specific heat is big and it's a big thickness, then that makes the time more. So that makes me not have to walk over there, you see? So it helps to kind of be a bit lazy. <laughs> then it makes you think more, All right? Okay, so now you're gonna put ln of, now since we already know we wanna reach 626, the, uh, the outside temperature, outside is, well, let's call it not final, but outside is, uh, let's call it T outside, is 20. So then delta T final is gonna be six. Initial temperature difference is gonna be 50 minus 20. So notice I'm not subtracting 50 minus 26. Let's see. I'm going 50 minus 20 and 26 minus 20. So you're, you're always subtracting the outside temperature. So that's going to be ln 30. What am I putting for the A? That for the K. This total K that I found. Let's see. How did you get 0 0.0613 again? Oh, uh, I just basically added up all these. Whatever I got, I cross multiply. So that number came down here, the K went up there. Okay. That's it, on the calculator. You could, or you could say reciprocate, right. and then multiply the 20, so either way. So then that number you put over here, 0 0.0613. Okay, what's the area? Okay, 20 by eight. So that's 160 meters squared. But then you have that wall, 160. You have the front wall, 160. The back wall, 160. And the roof, 160. Uh, you probably don't lose too much to the ground, but yeah, you probably do, but let's ignore that. Because you also lose through the floor, through the concrete or whatever material you have there, but let's ignore that. So then you have 160, 160, 160, 160, so. 800. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 800 meters squared. Okay, so that's that. The mass of the air. Okay, the mass of the air in the room. So I need the density of air. One point two two five kilogram per cubic meter. So the density of air is one point two two five kilogram per cubic meter. And I multiply by the volume of the room. 
What's the volume of the room? Uh, it's a rectangle. So I need. Um, what is the volume? Huh? 160 is this guy. Times the. This. Uh, what was this thing? Oh, it wasn't given, huh? Yeah. You're assuming assuming that oh, no, no, I'm assuming it's 20. Yeah. 20. 20 from here to here. I mean, this thickness doesn't really matter. It's negligible compared to the 20. So the thickness of the thing does not change. So, I mean, the air is here anyway. The air is here. So the, the wall's thickness doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. So then that's going to be 160 meter squared times 20 meters per meter meter cancel okay now the specific heat of air Does it specific heat at constant pressure or the specific heat at constant volume, CP versus CV? Okay, so for gases, we're gonna have to get into that eventually. You have to worry, is it under constant pressure or constant volume? Uh, I believe this is constant volume because there are fixed volume in the room. Yeah, probably fixed volume. So what's the units? Kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, so let's keep this in kilogram. So you, a lot, there's a lot of unit analysis in this section, right? To make sure things cancel right. So since this is kilogram, I'm gonna do 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram. So in order for kilogram to cancel the kilogram, then I need 10 to the third here. Right, and then that's the specific heat. And then the thickness, D, is gonna be the, the total thickness, which is gonna be 20 centimeters, right? Yeah, so 0.2 meters is the thickness, times T. Okay, let's first calculate all that. ln of 6 is ln of 30 uh, because of this 10 to the third Now I can solve for T by just doing the ln of um, ln of five, right? Thirty over six. So five uh, ln divided by. I'm getting a pretty big number. Yeah, so if the outside temperature was uh, 20 Celsius, which is 
pretty okay. And your room was uh, 50, which is kind of warm actually. Uh, so basically, by in five hours, this will get down to 26. So assume that this is the temperature at night before you sleep, you turn off the heater, you wake up in the morning, so about six, seven hours later, right? And then that temperature has gone down to 26. So it makes sense. So through, through the night, you're losing heat if the, if, you're, if the heater is not on. So by about morning time, you are close to the outside temperature. Let's see. So the numbers make sense, yeah. The, the reason why it took a lot of time also, it was a pretty big house, <laughs> you know. It's a lot of room, uh, 20 by 20. Okay, so we'll continue that topic, and then today's lab will be a lot about the stuff that